What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode 43 of the LAN project here in Football Manager 2019. Today we are back once more. It's a big one. If you're someone who doesn't normally watch this series but has clicked on this video because Manchester United are in the thumbnail, make no mistake this is the biggest game in our club's history. It's not going to be an easy one. Uh, we're going to be playing at Windsor Park and well I guess we should set some context for those of you who don't watch every episode. We're in the Europa League. We're actually doing okay, considering it's only our second year in the knockout stages. Uh, last episode, we drew against Lille, uh, and prior to that, we beat Ludogorets. So, we're okay at the moment. Going into this game, the first of two games today in this episode, I'm not really expecting a win against Manchester United. But we're going to go out there and give it our best shot. Since we're last here, two games have been played. We played Glen Torren in the uh, the Premier League. You can see here we won 4-0. Lil, Dixon, an own goal, and then Justin Wright with the goals for us there. And then it's another 2-1 defeat against Glenavon. Yes, deja vu. Um, we actually took the lead in this game, to be fair. You can see the stats in the bottom left. I feel like to say we got FM'd would be an understatement. Uh, we were playing a very, very rotated team. I'll talk about that in a second. But yes, we took the lead in this game. Then a, a somewhat sketchy kind of corner that somehow made it over the line. And then Reese March oh, for them in the 95th minute with the heartbreaking winner saw them take all the spoils. Now, if you're familiar with our team and familiar with this series, you'll look at the team and go, who's Duggan? You might remember who Gebby is, but who's Gebby? Who's Walsh? Who, who, are the, who are these players? Basically, yeah, I mean, I talked about it at the end of last episode. We had international duty come up, and I tweeted out a picture over at, at Work the Space on Twitter. Essentially, I didn't have enough players for my first team, so we had to promote players from within. So we were giving games to players in our under-20s, players like Gebby, who, I love you, Gebby, and long-term, yes, you've probably got a future in the first team, but I don't necessarily think he was good enough for this kind of must-win game against, let's be honest, our big rivals. And while we are not particularly happy with that defeat, we're not particularly happy with the fact they knocked us out of the Northern Irish Football League Cup. And of course, following the Manchester United game, we've got a couple of games to play, but we are going to come back for a second game this episode where we're going to be taking them on in the league away from home. Obviously, we won 4-0 in the league. In terms of where that leaves us, we're currently three points behind Ballymena with a game in hand. We do have superior goal difference as well. So hopefully things can start going our way. And, uh, well, we're going to get straight into today's match because we've only played the two games. There's not been a whole lot going on. You can see Glatzel is still out in in injured. Uh, Sam Robinson is suspended for today's game. As a result, we are going to see Neko Williams come into the side. And Timmy Soberwale, who really has been a backup centre-back this year, um, he's out injured as well with a pulled hamstring. Not a major injury, but worth being aware of. And, uh, well, let's get into this, shall we? It's the biggest game in the club's history, I'm pretty sure. Manchester United, Europa League... Let's just see what we can do. In terms of our team, you'll notice some red on the tactical kind of stuff. This is basically where we're outclassed. I, it comes up very occasionally when you play against massively better opposition. So yes, a few areas where we are outclassed. In terms of the team, Neko Williams obviously comes in at right back. But the rest of our team is very much the same. Of course, going to be looking at McCoy and alongside him, uh, Morrison, to really put in good performances. Of course, both inconsistent players. We need today to be one of those days where they do turn up big. Higher up the pitch, we've got Jim Meister and Frame. Lil is going to play on the left. Bannon, who did get a goal in that game against Glenavon, he's going to be playing. Uh, out on the right, you could see already we've got Dixon. Up top, we are going to go with Wright. That does mean Paul O'Connor has been dropped. He's been pretty poor this year, to be honest, playing out on the left-hand side. So, yeah, we, he, he's sitting it out. He can think about what he's done. Maybe he can come off the bench and have an impact for us. But being entirely realistic, we are going to play our possession style of football, or at least try to, at home against Manchester United. It's probably going to backfire spectacularly. I say probably, almost certainly, but I don't want to play on the counter-attack. I don't want to sit back. In terms of their team, I mean, it looks a little rotated. Ethan Laird, never heard of you. They've got Savage at centre-back. They've got a regen in Brooks playing for them. I mean, he looks kind of good from what we can see for an 18-year-old. They've got Gomez. There's a, there's a few rotated plays that players there, and I'm looking at Laird and thinking you might be the weak link. Also, they're playing Dean Henderson in goal. I mean, it feels a little disrespectful. 
We're going full strength, of course. They still have by far and away the better team. Even the weak links in their side would probably walk into our uh, team. We're just going to try and motivate the players. Let's see if we can give it our all here. Of course, this game is not one that's going to make or break our group stage. Uh, if we can get anything here, it would just be a bonus. Of course, after this, we've got the game against Glenavon in the league. And given how tight the league is right now, that game is pretty blooming important. They are... Well, they, they've been a thorn in our side. They are quickly emerging as our big rivals, I think it would be fair to say. And I really want to beat them after this game. Luda Goretzk beating Lille early on is a huge result, by the way. That would actually be the best result for us besides them drawing. Um, but yeah, Luda Goretzk, if you can do us a favour, I would be very, very grateful. 20 minutes gone. I mean, we've lasted this long. We've had more of the ball, barely. Granted, they've had all the chances thus far, but at least we're doing something with it i guess anyway we're gonna go out to kane here on the left hand side now it's with lil back to kane let's just try and play our passing style let's not kind of bend over to manchester united let's play to our strengths matic just picked up a knock apparently maybe that can work in our favor although jim meister you can't give the ball away there son martial is through he's got the pace he's got the composure he's got his goal and I mean, they have had the better chances. It's just a shame that with the first clear-cut chance they've had here at Manchester United, they have broken the deadlock. Jim Meister, though, he could have just put it out into touch if he really wanted to get it out. He just gives it straight to them. They hit us on the counter. It's one big ball over the top. McCoy and Morrison, not the quickest pairing at centre-back. Certainly not Anthony Martial quick. Um, yeah, not, not ideal. And he's on a booking as well, Morrison, which... It's not great when he's going to be marking uh, Martial. And also, things go from bad to worse. Lilla now beating Luda Goretzk, uh, which I believe would mean it would come down to goal difference between ourselves and Lil, or head-to-head -head results. But at the moment, we're drawing. Um, we'll worry about that later. Of course, this is only the third game of the group stage. There's still three more to play after this. There's so many ways the, the whole race can change. But while we have the ball here, and we look okay with it bannon don't give away the ball again it's deja vu it's i'm i've been here before can jared thompson do something of course he can't we give away the ball you could argue we've committed too many men up the field but we committed so many men up the field and i think there was plenty of options to pass to there we've given it away and it's angel gomez with just another incredible ball from deep three men around him manages to pick out the perfect pass i mean our centre almost caught up with him to be fair to them but on the half an hour mark, Manchester United, perhaps deservedly, do get their second in the game. They've now got a set piece. I mean, Gomez has been just causing us problems. Now it's with Brooks, the regen. I mean, can, can we win the ball off him? Apparently not. Diogo Dalot switches it to Gomez. Surely he's not going to get a third assist. He cuts inside. I mean, he's just scored one of his own. How good is he in this save? I mean, that's just... I mean, he's worth 10 million. Our club is worth about 30 million. So... He is worth a third of what our entire kind of sum of our parts is worth. At the same time, though, I mean, he's just left all on his own. I don't want to watch it again. It was a beautiful goal. I can't deny it. The fact we've had some of the ball makes me feel like we could get a goal. And at this point, and even at kickoff, a goal probably would have been what we were aiming for. Lil, I would like to keep the goal difference reasonably respectable. I mean, it's just hoof ball over hoof ball again and again and again. The ball questionable cross although Sanchez should keep it in play he does Kieran Kane though mops, mops it up can we make something happen here goal difference could play a factor I don't want to roll over on our backs and die in this manner where we don't do anything we're going to try Bannon spreads the ball to Neko Williams I mean get on side whoever that is Neko pulls it back I mean game on get we'll claim it game on Justin Wright with the goal his 16th of the year Neko Williams with the assist Re reason for optimism we've had more possession we've not had anywhere near as many shots as them but at half time 3-1 it could be a lot worse I mean this is one of those games where you go into it if we get anything from this game it's a bonus let's be honest I will say Manchester United's team are a little bit more tired than ours I noticed there we'll, we'll, we'll pause it between highlights next time so you can just see the, the two teams conditions but we just look here gomez on 75 percent condition okay may maybe i've lied a little bit it's just gomez really and laird I, I don't know maybe we do have a slight fitness advantage here it, it is very marginal it's definitely not something that we should pay too much attention to but i'm gonna bring it to your attention but if we do make some kind of comeback it's entirely on me 
They've brought in Mason Greenwood now, who's a very good young prospect in real life, very good in football manager as well. I mean, we've got a chance here. Neko Williams, get the ball in. He's got one assist already. Keefe Frame to the edge of the box. Have a go, Kane. The left back, surely not. Blocked away. I mean, are we about to... Hmm. See, there's an argument here to suggest that I should have set our defence to sit deeper after, like, the first goal. And I didn't. And maybe I should have done in hindsight, but it's a bit too late for that now, isn't it? It's 4-1. I mean, it's Gomez. I mean, this time at least Gomez doesn't get the assist, I guess. It's gone to Mason Greenwood, who's on in place of Martial, but very much fulfilled the same role in the team. It's a tidy finish in the end. It's not particularly pretty. I want to be telling the boys, you know, don't worry, lads, it's almost over, but we have still got to go to Old Trafford. Chance here for the for us. Kieran Kane, options in the middle, crosses it, booted away clear. Oh, this is this is not good. This is the the defending, I'm gonna be honest, has been frankly appalling. <laughs> and there's there's an argument to say it should sit deeper, but I think we then just give them room to, you know, play into. I feel like we then just give them room to play into. We'll sit deeper now. <laughs> What are you doing this now, Jack? It's 5-1. I mean, Gomez has gone off for Chong. Chong definitely has the superior hairstyle. It's a shame it's not, like, mimicked in the 3D match engine. Can Kieran Kane do something? No. No is the answer. Kieran Kane is very much a no-nonsense left-back. He's not known for his ability going forward, but for some reason in today's game, there's been a few times where he's gone forward and given away the ball, thinking he's, like, Marcelo or something. The worst thing about all of this is that they've had all the clear-cut chances, but when you actually look at the raw stats, we've we've done okay. We've we've had five shots on target. We've had more possession. Unfortunately, they've been very clinical on the break. But I don't feel like this has been a walloping, you know, where we've kind of dropped back. Oh, Dixon! If you score, then suddenly we get a second goal, and it looks really respectable. The fact we scored two against United. But I feel like when you look at the stats of this game. Yes, they. I know they hit us on the break. Yes, they probably did have the better chances. But I don't feel like... It would have been very easy for me in this game to go really defensive, try and hit them once on the break. I'd rather play this positive brand of football that I want us to strive to play in all competitions and go down fighting. And actually, despite the result, I don't think we played that badly. Which might seem a little bit mad considering we've lost 5-1. Please let me know, am I mad or would you agree that that's an okay performance? I mean... Answers on a postcard in the comments. I'm sure uh, not everyone is going to agree on that. Sarri says that Lan can be proud. Of course, Mauricio Sarri, now Manchester United manager, says that we can be proud. Uh, apparently, we gave them a tough ba battle. I assume this is his interpreter who said this. He must have got the words wrong because there's no way Sarri said that. But yes, 5-1. Not ideal. And we've got to try and bounce back now. We've got games against Bangor and Ards. And then we're going to come back for the game against Glenavon. So it's in a week's time. Two games in the meantime. The fixture congestion in Northern Ireland is very, very real. We'll try and deal with that as best we can. I'll be back in a week. And, well, let's hope we can get some revenge on Glenavon. Because, frankly, we need to take our frustration out on someone. And I want them to be the team we do it on. Okay, guys, so we're back here for the second game of today's episode against Glenavon. Second versus fifth, which really doesn't tell the whole story here. This side, they finished second to us for a number of years in a row. Uh, you can actually see, looking at the league table here, we're five points behind Ballymena with that game in hand. And, uh, well, you can see here for Glenavon, on the other hand, they're six points or hat behind us with the same amount of games played. So a win here could really do us a world of good. They've been in a rough little bit of form. They too have kind of been suffering from the fixture congestion that has definitely plagued our season so far. And so I'm really hoping that we can capitalise on that. Uh, you can see here, if we just look at their schedule, um, they've won their last few games, although they weren't in cup games. But prior to that, you can see they've not won in their previous four league games. So I'm hoping that we can inflict some further misery. They also took on Ballymena just two days ago. So they're in a similar boat to us where we've played two games. And I'll just quickly cover these here. So we drew 0-0 against Banger, um, a game that we should have won. It finished 0-0, but you can see looking at the stats here, they didn't have a shot on target. We were very poor, though. We didn't create enough, to be honest. Uh, it was our rotated team, but it's not really an excuse. Following that, though, in the County Antrim Shield semi-final, you can see here, 6-1 win. Really convincing. Uh, played a pretty much fully rotated team this match. And it leaves us in a position where, going into today's game, our first team is fit. And I don't think the same can be said of their team. If we just have a look here at their general info that's not shown there, I just want to see... 
uh, the fitness, yeah, you can see here, so some of their perhaps crucial players just not going to be available for selection, although actually looking at it, it does look like they've been a little smart themselves and rotated their team. Interesting to see the AI doing a good job of that in FM. I know for a few years it did struggle with that. So pat on the back FM19, I guess, although it doesn't make our job any easier today. Anyway, let's get into today's game. No messing around. It's Lan away from home against Glenavon. You might have seen there in just two more days' time. We've got another league game here. Their recent form in all competitions has been strong. Ours has been very hit and miss. We want to hit it and hit it hard today. Um, in terms of the team, is this the team I want to play? You know what, O'Connor, I'm still going to drop you for Lil, which might seem harsh, but Lil's done very, very good, and to be honest, he's been superb from set pieces this year. You can see four goals and three assists in eight league starts and three appearances on off the bench, and he's been improving a lot. So I'm going to put my faith in him over O'Connor, who could be a good impact sub still. In terms of the rest of the team, though, it's very, very standard. Um, with this fixture congestion, which is something that we've kind of got accustomed to now, it's at the start of every season, the first couple of months, the fixtures are all a little bit mad. I feel like we've kind of got used to it now, to a point where I feel like with our very strong first team and our very strong second team, we're quite kind of used to interchanging our starting 11s, rotating the team a lot. You might have noticed just on the team kind of squad view, um, just how many appearances just players across the board have had. Um, I think we're easily going to end up with 20 players in kind of double figures for appearances this year, which is obviously pretty unprecedented. But as has been the nature of our time in here in Northern Ireland, just fixture congestion, it's something that we have to deal with. And I guess in some ways I have to be thankful for the resources we have here at LAN allow me to really reinvest into the club and put ourselves in the best possible position. Anyway, let's see what we can do here. Neko Williams to Lil, and that is why we have started Lil over O'Connor. Neko Williams at right back. Um, he's an interesting one because you might remember two years ago, first year in the top flight, he was our star right back. And then last year, he kind of fizzled out a favour a little bit. You know, Sam Robinson came in very good defensively. Sam Robinson's been suspended this year. He's had a few injuries for a fairly extended period of time. Nico Williams has come in and despite really not being at the races last year, this year has just hit the ground running. And it's crosses like that and goal assists like that that have really just been um, a bit of a throwback to a couple of years ago this season thus far. Anyway, despite us being a goal up, not a whole lot in the way of clear-cut chances being created by either team after half an hour. We've certainly had the better of the play. 71% of possession away from home is superb. And what we're going to try and build from the back here, McCoy, of course, alongside Morrison, the two Northern Irish international defenders, thus far doing a pretty good job for us. Of course, after the game against Manchester United, I feel like they've got a point to prove. For those of you who don't watch the series religiously but are still with us, you might be asking questions, you know, who are these guys? Why have you not dropped them? I mean, they're good players. They're not Martial good, but they're very good players. And while Dixon, down this right-hand side, beats his men, beats all his men, crosses it in. The ball at the end of it deserved to be better. That run in the build-up to it was great. Now with Kane to Bannon, lays it inside to frame. Back with Bannon, who hits it. Tuffy, not, not the most convincing of goalkeeping, I think it would be fair to say there, as he parries it over the crossbar. We now have a corner. Lil is going to take it. Back post. Won by Atkinson. And I feel like that's probably all she wrote for this highlight. Although it keeps going and going. Is this the pointless highlight or can something magical happen? Hmm. I think it was the pointless highlight. I don't know about you guys. Anyway, coming up to halftime, 1-0 would be okay. What's particularly pleasing is how much we've limited them. But as you saw in the game where we took them on in the Iron Brew Cup... This is a team that we have dominated game after game after game, but they keep FMing us, and the last two times we've met, they've beaten us 2-1. So as much as I want to be happy um, with being one goal to the good, I'm still going to tell the players I'm not happy. I want to keep them switched on. I do not want to allow complacency to slip in here. And well, let's see how we get on in this second half. You know, if we can maintain the level of performance previously, if we can limit them to having no shots on target... We're never going to concede, but realistically, it probably isn't the most realistic of expectations. We've got a set piece here. Lil, from it, takes it narrowly over. I mean, that's again why we've got him on the pitch. He can hit them well. I'm going to do some changes here. I'm going to take off Kenny Dixon for Janiel Bennett, who got a hat-trick against Ards. And I'm also going to take off Wright and bring in Pestridge. I'm not going to bring in O'Connor in this game, just because Pestridge has been playing pretty well um, where we've given him first-team football. I want to give him a chance here. Lil can't get on the end of the cross, but there might be a second chance here. Pestridge 
Can't get it in at the first time of asking. It's parried wide. Daniel McKay off. Rory Jarvis on. One former player of ours swapped for another. I mean, hopefully they're not going to come back to bite us here. Jim Meister, edge of the box. Can he get it into the mixer? Probably not. And, well, it's another pointless highlight, isn't it? 20 minutes left. I'm going to demand more from the players. Lil, back post. McCoy's there. And he's headed it over. A really good chance for us there. Probably the best chance we've had since scoring, if we're being realistic here. Ball given away here by Jim Meister. Jarvis gets it. Our former man, don't let him break through. I mean, it's a lovely run. Don't let him finish it. Thompson, you've done nothing all game. You've turned up big when we needed you to, son. What a save that is. Daly Campbell now to take it. So many of our former players are in. Thompson again with the save. A, a near post free header. Probably should have been hit. Well, hitting it slightly better than that. Straight at the keeper in the end. Five minutes left. Let's make our one last change here. Lil really struggling with fitness. Paul O'Connor, get on the pitch. Five minutes left just for us to see out in this game. Extra time. I don't want to take it for granted because they're good in extra time. Ball whip back post. Marsh. Another one of our former players hits the crossbar. I mean, the game can end now, please. It's been a bit close for comfort. It looks like we're going to scrape a 1-0 here. I mean, Lil with the very, very, very early goal. I don't know if you could even say we deserved it. They had the best chance of the game, the best chances of the game. We created so much more in the way of shots and, I guess, half chances. But ultimately, it came down to that early goal making the difference maker. And also, Jared Thompson in goal playing great. You can see our back four here really did play solidly. Neko Williams picking up man of the match. As I mentioned, his performances as of late have just been superb for us. Really has been a difference maker at right back. You can see how much he's improving here. The Welsh into 21 international. Hopefully he can keep that going for us. Boys, a great win. We'll take it. We've now got a reset for Dungan and Swifts who are bottom of the league. And you might have noticed there, Manchester United just a week away as well. Which I think is where we have to come back next time to give them a rematch at Old Trafford. So yeah, I think next episode we'll do the games against Manchester United and maybe also the game against Crusaders, which is the County Antrim Shield final. The County Antrim Shield is a competition that we've had a lot of success in. It's a competition that our board don't value particularly, but I'd like to win it for a fourth year in a row if we can. And having not covered it much last year, and with me thinking we'll probably play our second string 11 against them, um, it might be a good chance to show off some of the players that you don't always get to see in the bigger game episodes. But anyway, guys, that is going to be all from me today. Thank you for watching, as always. If you have enjoyed today's video, do leave a like on it. If you've got any comments, leave them down below. Uh, maybe a score prediction for the game next episode against United. Get it down in the comments. And, uh, well, I will see you guys on the next one. It is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.